Hey, what's up guys? So uh, we are going to be going over the staple or synchros that you should essentially play uh, even if you don't play any tuners in your deck. This is more so for beginners and people just jumping into the game uh, because sometimes I get asked, you know, what cards should I put in my extra deck? Well, I don't know what deck you're playing, so it's kind of hard for me to decide for you without knowing what deck you're playing. But I put together a lot of great synchros here that I'll kind of go briefly over some of them because this is more for people that are trying to, you know, jump into the game and they're kind of curious what are synchros, what are XYZs, which ones are, you know, kind of good. So I'll go over what I consider, you know, kind of cards that you can run in a majority of decks because they don't require certain things. Keep in mind, some synchros will require different things. Like Arctic Magician, for example, he requires uh, a non-tuner spellcaster type monster and something like dark and dragon requires a dark monster that is a non-tuner and uh, these right here these four right here i will consider them you know pretty much staple in a lot of different decks meaning that you know you can just throw these in and you should be able to uh, make them uh, even if you don't play any tuners because remember you have monster reborn that card is now legal so you can uh technically monster reborn your opponent's tuner card and essentially still make these cards so first off cataster cataster basically destroys anything that is not um dark so uh, anything that's not dark you just attack and destroys it but his effect does not work on face down that's just a, a thing to know he is level five so that means any level four plus you can want maybe monster reborn your opponent's effect villa or you know just summon your effect villa and make him so it's really easy to make uh next up black rose dragon so um he's basically used to blow up the entire field so he's level seven a little bit more difficult to make perhaps but uh, the thing is, um, you can blow up the entire field, including himself. He also does die. If your opponent activates something like Skill Drink, keep in mind you can always chain things like Book of Moon to make his effect resolve face down, and therefore, you know, um, something like Skill Drain would not affect uh, Black Rose because he's now face down. So that's just another tip for you guys. But yeah, Black Rose Dragon, pretty good. It just blows up the field. Uh, next up, Scrap Dragon. Now, this card is great when you already have hand advantage and you feel like, you know what, I'm going to pr probably beat my opponent and. Um, you know, I just want to be able to get a large attacker and I can just keep on popping face downs, no problem. So he's really good. He's a 2800 and his effect is not a cost. So if your opponent activates an effect builder on your scrap dragon, um, you do not destroy uh, your card at all. So what he does is once per turn, you can target one card your opponent controls and one card you controls and you destroy them both. That destruction happens at the same time. So if, again, if they affect Valor, you don't have to destroy your card and they don't destroy theirs either. Um, another card, now this one should be <laughs> pretty self-explanatory, but uh, you know, there's always new players that jump into the game, so I'll talk about him a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about him, I should say. Uh, yeah, but uh, he's level 8 and um, basically whenever a spell trap or effect monsters is activated that destroys card or cards on the field you can tribute this card to negate the activation and during the end phase if this card uh negated an effect this way you can special summon this card from your graveyard so basically whenever your opponent tries to blow up the field you just you know tribute stardust and it negates the effect and then you get him back and he's 2500 so he's got good attack good defense and he's kind of one of those uh really just overall really good cards because whenever you're in a position where you have lots of traps to protect stardust dragon uh you can sometimes just win the game by just having stardust dragon plus protection um he's a very good card but i'll just mouse over these uh other cards that are pretty good but uh you know they're not might not be for everyone because certain uh decks can utilize them more than others because they require certain things so i'm just gonna go over them really quick i don't know why that card got in there that card should not have been there <laughs> but uh yeah we'll just go over them there's arc knight uh Darkened, Formless Synchron, Gaia, Gungnir, uh, Karakuri, what is this one? Shogun? Oh, this is Burray. Uh, that's, that's how everyone calls them. They, they, they just call them Burray. Um, this is Natria Beast. These cards are really good, uh, especially in like Six Samurais. Um, and when you make this card against Dark World, Natria Beast specifically, they automatically lose, almost automatically lose. Um, there we got Natria Barkon, Mistworm, Colossal Fighter, Armory Arm, Orient Dragon, Scrap Dragon, and Thought Ruler Archfiend. Now, I would say that pretty much covers the basics of like. Um, the, the synchros that you probably want to take a look at also uh, red dragon archfiend is okay just because he's 3000 attack that's literally the reason why i think he's really good but um yeah i would say these four right here uh these cards are definitely the cards that you should consider playing um even if you're not playing any tuners again you have monster reborn there's all, all kinds of crazy things that can happen in Yu-Gi-Oh. maybe your opponent special summons a tuner to your side of the field with their crazy condition uh that is met but yeah keep in mind you can always just 
always fill your extra deck up to 15. You might as well have them there because it won't hurt you to have more cards uh, available as far as your ability to access them than not being able to have them at all. So yeah, I would say these four are pretty much the cards that you want to uh, play in your extra deck if you just have some room. Uh, these cards are definitely recommended for the synchro section. Now I'll be making another video uh, about staple XYZs or exceed monsters, which are the black cards that don't go in your uh, deck, in your main deck essentially. And again, these are more videos for people just jumping in the game or just kind of want to know what is kind of staple in Yu-Gi-Oh! As far as the extra deck, because I would say pretty much a lot of these cards, again, these cards I'm mentioning above, these are all great cards, but uh, not everyone can make these because this one requires an Earth Tuner plus uh, a non-Turner Earth Monster. Um, some of these, what are these? Oh, well, these these ones are pretty generic right here. Uh, these don't require anything, but yeah, some of them, remember to check what they require. Now, this one requires a non-Tuner Water Monster. So remember what deck you're playing that can factor in which ones you can uh, play or not play. But remember, there's always Monster Reborn. You can Monster Reborn your opponent's non-Tuner Water Monster and maybe make him uh, Gungnir anyways, even though you don't play him. So keep that in mind as well. But yeah, hopes this help you, helps you guys out as far as your kind of more so beginner players that, uh, you know, want to uh, play the white cards, the synchros. But uh, if you want to check out the Exceed version of kind of staples and Exceeds, go ahead and click on the annotation that appears right now on the screen, or you can visit the description box if you cannot click on annotations, and maybe we can, uh, you know, show you uh, the black cards and what they can essentially do in the game, and I can help you guys out uh, that are kind of more so jumping into the game right now. But thanks for watching, Asianize, signing out.